Schmidt beer, the brew that grew to be best in the great Northwest. Your finest craft beer, Barkey. Man to man, smoke Roy Tan. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Gentlemen. And now, here are Greg, Scott, and Dan coming at you ice cold and unfiltered. Yes, we are. Welcome in, everybody. It's the Unfiltered Gentlemen. You made it. Thanks for joining. Thanks for listening along and, most importantly, drinking along. I am Greg. Oh, that's Scott. Hello, everybody. And that's Dan. My ass. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> Dan, you're going to have to tweet out that link. I think I'm going to have to now. now. At cleanup glass, at yeah. cleanup glass on Twitter. We've, we've been listening to his song before the show started. Yeah. That, uh, that'll clear that all up. It will. Uh, all right. Thanks for listening. Thanks for joining along. Big shout out to our top listening city of last week, which was back after quite a hiatus. Oh, shit. Salt Lake City, oh, Utah. Wow. There they are. Damn, yeah. man. I was worried. Haven't seen them on the charts yeah. for quite some time. That law change for the grocery there stores. There it is. That's yeah, that it. got them yeah. back. Yeah. Got yeah. them back, man. They're back in the saddle. A bunch of drunk Utahians. Yes, exactly. Yeah, Utahians. Oh, God. Please don't have any more kids. <laughs> <laughs> or wives. You've had, an, yeah, you've had enough of both. Uh, our burp word of the week is spring. Because ah. spring is here. Spring uh, has. It's in the air. Sprung. It is in the air. Uh, don't forget to show us your beers on the social medias. Hashtag show us your beers. And uh, rate and subscribe on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever else you do your podcast listening. Um, we are fresh off of our March Madness Hazy IPA tournament. And oh, I, man. first of all, amazing. Yes. Beautiful tournament. Absolutely. Beautiful tournament. The best in years. Yes. Uh, but most importantly, I think I need some breaks from the IPAs, yeah. from the hazies. And now that spring has sprung, I think I have brought us the perfect spring beer. Grab your libations, pals. It's time for Beer of the Week. And if you're drinking well, you know that you're my friend. And I'll say, I think I'll have myself a beer. Haven't heard that song in a while. In time for spring. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. It's been NBA Jam for a while. <laughs> yeah, it has. Holy shit. A little Luther Vandross after that. <laughs> uh, just in time for spring and in time to cleanse our very bitter palates at this point, we are drinking Integrant Brewing's lightest one, Hellas Lager. Oh, my God. <laughs> 4.8%, 21 minuscule IBUs, 4.02 on Beer Advocate, and a 3.62 on Untapped. From the brewery, they say the lightest one is a 4.8% ABV German-style Helles Lager. Helles German, uh, Helles German for bright, is a crisp, clean German lager with a touch of hops. Not only do we love flavorful and easy drinking lagers like this, but now when anyone comes to the brewery and asks for our lightest beer, we have a quick answer. <laughs> so whatever, whether you're new to the craft beer scene and are used to beers on the lighter side, or you're just looking for a full-flavored, light, and refreshing beer, this beer is for you. Indeed it is. Oh my god. This is this is like one of the perfect floating beers. Easy. Like you're out on a hot day in the pool or in the lake or something. Oh yeah. Easy. Yeah. Just float around with one of these. It's my favorite beer for when I'm there. You know, to mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. actually at physically at the brewery. Yes. To just kind of drink all day while I'm there. Oh, there you go. Yep. Such a good beer. 4.8. You can't go wrong. Mm-mm. All day drinker. Yeah. It's great football Sunday beer. Yeah. I won't wake up all messed up or mm-hmm. anything. Not yeah. too strong. But Full very of, tasty. Yeah. 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 It's, it's kind of like you fought through a hard March Madness tournament. <laughs> right. And you just want to relax. And oh, yeah. man. Just kind of recoup. Sit by the pool. Yeah. Recoup. Rehydrate nice, a little. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's yeah, it's perfect for that. Agreed. Yeah, this is definitely one of the more flavorful lagers you'll get your hands on. Yeah, it's it's good. It doesn't it doesn't just it's not one of those things where you're like let's get it as cold as possible and just pound it. Like it's tasty. Yeah, it is so tasty. Yeah, good stuff. I yeah. mean, everything they make over there is tasty. It's very beautiful. I love that place. That's true. I've said it so many times. I know. But I'll never stop saying it. <laughs> I love Integrin, man. That's such a great brewery. Yes. And, you know, I talked about being at the uh, Central Coast. Brew Fest or whatever last week in mm-hmm. the show, and um, they were there and they had their freshly tapped Mybach, which is their spring lager. And 
that was tasty as well. Oh, wow. Yeah. In fact, uh, another brewer challenged me to have both uh, Integrins Maybach and then, um, what is it, Halter, Hollister, excuse me, Hollister Brewings Maybach. It's like, have them side by side and tell me what you think. And it was a it was a brewer that was not related to either of these breweries, and uh, we both compared notes. And Anagrin was is that right? a winner. Wow. God, yeah. they're so good. So I wanted good. to hear that. Yeah, I wanted. I was like, come on, Anagrin. <laughs> well, it's funny. Like he, we were talking, and he's like, you got you got to try both. And I was like, uh oh. It's like really. He goes, oh yeah. Go to Anagrin, and then go to uh, Hollister. I was like, really? Wow. And then I go, I was like. Oh, this isn't a competition. Wow. And I really like Hollister. Like, they do some really good Right. Beers. No insult. No. But they're also not like a lager factory like Integrin. Right. They're pumping out these Dude, lagers. So. They know how to do it. Yes. Oh, love me some lightest one. Love Nighthawk. It's just, it's just all good. You can't go wrong. Nope. I feel like I'm being paid to say all this. I know, <laughs> I swear right? swear we're not being yeah, paid. Yeah. We're not on the payroll. Not yet, at I least. wish. <laughs> I know. I wish I was on their payroll. Hey, John Bird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you'd like to put us on your payroll, we'd gladly... Yeah, get Easy. paid to just talk pay about me in beer. beer. Yeah, oh my god, oh, man, that'd be so good. Just the like pallets of Nighthawk show up. Oh, Quit sorry. my job tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> what job? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that'd be so good. All right, well, to make things even worse, <laughs> I swear to you, we're not getting paid by Integrin. Let's move into some crotch talk. Have a grievance to share? It's time for a crotch talk. Friendly reminder. Oh shit! <laughs> it's this weekend. If you're listening to the show as it drops, really expressed at Integrin once again. Totally not being paid. <laughs> Wish we were. John, you want to pay us to uh, talk about your beer? We will right. absolutely do that. Some free beers. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, we'll do it. Uh, enough beers to make us not ever need to buy beer again so we can quit our jobs. Mm-hmm. I think that's the only reason we were. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Freelings Fest, April 13th, coming up Saturday. We'll be there from 11 until 5-ish. <laughs> the, the party goes on all night long. But uh, come hang out. Get some swag. Check out our shirts. Uh, record your favorite drunk story. We'll also have the Alpine photo booth. Uh, you can come take your picture in Germany there. So uh, stop on by. <laughs> what else is going on? Oh, mm-hmm. all right. This is batch 143. We've been doing this for a hot minute now, as the kids say. Yeah. And <laughs> one thing we uh, have never done is refresh the look of the show. Ooh. And I, I think it's time we do a little show look refresh. And uh, a new logo has been in the works for some time. It's gone under uh, months of scrutiny yeah. and tweakings. And uh, yeah, we had our uh, designers kind of going going at it, in right, the, in the war room over there, yeah, yes. down in the basement, the yeah. art department. Yeah, yeah, yeah art, art department. Thank you. Yeah, they art were, designers. <laughs> they, they were being uh, starved of beer until they finished. Yep. Yeah, so and they were, sleep. Right. Yeah. Beer and no beer, no sleep until they finish. Just kidding, guys. <laughs> and uh, they have, they've come up with something. So a couple more tweaks to finalize things. But in the coming weeks, you might see some uh, posts on social media. Maybe asking for some opinions. Maybe as the brand starts to shape out, you'll see the new logo pop mm-hmm. up. Uh, our official unveiling will be on batch 150. By oh, then, shit. Everything should be official. It will be man. everywhere you want to be, just like a Visa card. <laughs> so there you go right on yeah so look out for that let us know what you think when you see it um barrel works oh got myself up to barrel works over the weekend Ooh, right on doing barrel works i was very excited because they recently released paraba java which they said they never release again so i was excited and angry because when they stopped selling it a couple years back i bought multiple bottles at like 25 bucks a bottle and i was like i'm gonna sell her these and this is the best beer i've ever had blah 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 I still have one of the original 2016 Parappa Javas. Well, they decided to re-release it, which is great for the most part. Um, so we got up there at Barrel Works. They had 2015 Parabola, 2019 Parabola, and then, of course, 2019 Parappa Java. So the lady friend and I did some very important beer research oh, yeah, and beer important. science. Yeah, had that 15 up against the 19. The 15... Well, you could taste that they're like the similar base beer, but that 15 had a few years to mellow out, and it was just so smooth and easy. Go- oh, God, it's so <laughs> good. Of course, the Parappa Java was good. We had a couple of their sours that you fellows would not be interested in. <laughs> um, neck Bones, which is like a, a nectarine sour, and a couple other names are escaping me. Uh, Seventh Nail, that was a good one, too. Really, really good. We also had their Pink Boots collaboration beer that they did. Okay. It's uh, Pink Boots with the Fur. Oh, shit. It's a hazy IPA. 
really fucking good. Wow. Like, could have been a very strong contender in the tournament. Ooh. Really? Yeah, it was that good. Oh, man. So we brought some home, and uh, it'll be coming up on Beer Harmony uh, possibly this week, depending on how the schedule goes. Cool. So look for that on Beer Harmony. Right Very, on. very tasty. Um, yeah, got to do some, We also did some wine tasting up in that area, too, because I guess that's what you do when you're up in like the Santa Inez and Buellton area. You can <laughs> drink some wine. But I was very much excited for Barrel Works, of course. Right on. So a lot of wine country up there. A lot of wine up there, yeah. and in when in Rome, get Might drunk as, well. as the Romans do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So the, we had our friends that live up there were members at a couple of wineries. So drinking cool. for free, it could hey, be why not? just about anything. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So any other, anybody grievances? I got something. All Ooh, right. and it's not. Well, yeah, it is a grievance. <laughs> yeah, it totally. Undecided. Is. Yeah, at first I wasn't, but I totally remembered the situation. I, I don't know. I've been watching, obviously, the March Madness uh, tournament. tournament. Yeah. And, the uh, one that was not quite as good as ours. Correct. Oh, yeah. No, it wasn't. But uh, I tried to make the best of it. And uh, I, I do remember the first weekend, you know, I just kind of been watching it here and there at the bars. And uh, there was one bar I went to. And I thought I had a really great idea doing it. And it was, uh, I went to the Tilted Kilt. And, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, Thousand Oaks. And great idea and i explained it to the guy you know there's some guy sitting next to me just real quick you know we're talking about the game and sure. stuff you know and uh i was just telling him you know i was like yeah you know i just came down here because there's three games going on at a time right now and there's three tvs here so you know I'm watching you one game here yeah, yeah. that one goes to Will commercial watching the next game yeah. and then you know if the that math goes, adds up yeah yeah and they'll both go to commercial I'll watch the third game all of them on commercial. I'm just gonna stare at this chick's ass, right? And the bartender, he's got her. Oh my god, this chick, dude! Like, she, sorry, I'm gonna go on on about her this ass. now. Yeah. yeah, this is not a grievance. <laughs> like, this chick, like, you know how they wear like those like skirts, right? They oh wear, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. But this chick, like, I don't know if she hers was not legal. Like, it was not a uh, you know regulation. Yeah, regulation. Thank yeah. you. It wasn't. No, she cut it or something, dude. Because oh, yeah, no. she was working like, for those. Sorry, tips. man. It was just straight ass. This is a grievance. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> Dan's angry. Yeah, <laughs> straight up ass, dude. And it was awesome, like having her, like you know, bartending or whatever. But anyways, so I was watching games there. I wanted to go to Hooters because I kind of feel like Hooters is like strippers with wings, basically. <laughs> yeah, you know where they'll talk to you and they'll pretend they like you, but you know, come we we're all in the game on the game here. We they're, and they're not very on. good at pretending either. They, sometimes they're not. Yeah. yeah, but um, so I was at Tilted Kilt, and then like I don't know, I was ch- chatting it up with people around there when mm-hmm. during commercials and stuff. And this dude, like, you know, came up to me, you know, and we're just kind of talking. But, like, he, like, uh, poor guy. I mean, he, he seemed like a nice guy. He kind of looked like Carlos Mencia. Okay. Could have been him. I don't know. But Probably like, was. Yeah, yeah. I guess he was saying, like, he worked as, like, a... Uh, Comedian? Uh, like a... No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was totally him. Yeah, the rip- who stole jokes yeah, from people. Yeah, stole jokes from Joe Rogan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. Like, uh, he was a waiter or something like that for oh, the okay. country club. Oh. I don't know. He was just talking to me and telling me, like, how many, like, you know, cool people he's met, I guess. You know, how much they tip him and stuff like that. Sure. And, you know, I, that's a great story for when I'm not watching basketball. You right. know what I mean? Like, when I'm he was, not occupied. Yeah, he was keeping me from watching the game. Like, he was literally showing me pictures. Ooh, and, oh, that's weird. Yeah, yeah, on the phone. Like, oh, here's me and Kid Rock. I was like, dude, like, that's great, but I'm trying to watch the fucking game here. Yeah. Eventually, like, I just had to bounce because, like, I was like, all right, this guy's not going to let me watch my game, so. Here's that's my annoying. fist on your face. <laughs> yeah. Right. Take a so, picture of that bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, right? <laughs> that is annoying. Yeah. Like, you're yeah, not friends. I, yeah. Yeah, correct. I hate that, man. It yeah. wasn't like you went to hang out and talk. Yeah. Yeah. So and the game I, happened to be on. You went for the game, and and, and that and I, I, you know, yeah. Everyone's like, yeah, Dan, that's bullshit. But you know, I, I do in a sense get it. Like, poor guy. Maybe he's like doesn't have anything. He was trying to get away from his wife and his family. Probably wanted to like have a bro to talk to. I'm sure or go. something. Or his you know, wife was trying to get away from like, him. <laughs> yeah, it's like see, yeah, I know. I've done enough about Kid Rock. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> go to the bar or something. Yeah, <laughs> maybe so, hook up with that sexy beard. Yeah. So, I don't know, it's probably, here's a cool-looking guy here. Yeah, like, he, yeah. he looks like he'll spark up a good conversation. He's got quite the beard. Yeah, exactly. And cooler. Yeah, and cooler. Yeah. talking to everybody. So, let me go talk to him. Yeah. So, I get it. But I was like, dude, I'm here to watch basketball, man. So I had to bounce. Yeah, I hate when you're there for a reason. They just yeah. want to talk. And to it's you. obvious. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah, I was up there watching the game, man. Like, my eyes were not peeling from the TV. Right. I'm not at my, staring at my phone doing Facebook. Right. You know, that kind of stuff. Exactly. I'm very obviously. I'm on watching. business here. Yeah. We're here for a reason. Yeah. If I'm not watching TV, I'm watching ass. 
Right. <laughs> We're on suicide <laughs> watch. Talking talking to you. Oh, yeah. Ever since Zion got eliminated. Oh, I know. Oh, my God. <laughs> on suicide watch. Baseball or playoff basketball? I don't know. Mm. We'll see. We'll see who wins. It'd be interesting to find out. Oh, my God. Because it's either way. Yeah. Especially early season baseball. Yeah. Spring baseball when it doesn't matter because there's still 184 games to go. Mm-hmm. Or playoff pro basketball. That really doesn't matter because we all know who's going to make it. They just call it Travel Fest 2019. (laughs) Travel Fest. That's what it should be called. Three-point palooza. (laughs) Jesus Christ. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, God. All right. Anybody else grievances? Are we feeling good? Yeah. It kind of reminded me of uh, an experience I had the other night when I came home late. You're showing some of your kid rock photos? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It was was late at night. I came home from work. It's like almost 11 o'clock, and there was a lady standing outside like sleeveless sleeveless shirt on and i just you know didn't pay any attention to her i'm i'm gonna go home and go to bed so as i get close to her and she's like hey i'm like hey she goes hey cold night and i go yeah it's pretty cold out here and then she like repeated that like four times yeah pretty, uh, she's following me she goes yeah pretty cold out here yeah pretty cold out here. yeah and then there's some steps i got to go down so my knees are kind of messed up so as i get to the steps i'm like holding on and she goes hey are you okay at the steps i go yeah yeah i'm fine and it's then drunk, she's like don't worry and then she repeats that like 20 times. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine. And she's following me home. Oh, my I'm God. Like, what? And, and so I'm thinking, okay, I'm not going to stop where I live. Right. She's still following me. I'm just going to keep going. Because either that or I walk in the door and say, hey, honey, she followed me home. Can I keep her? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I'm not sure how good that would go. But yeah, you know, she like you know, turned it off and went another way. But it's like, Weird. stop. I'm, I'm like, stop talking to me. I'm tired. I don't want to talk to you. Right. I just want to go home. Well, welcome to your new place. Yeah. yeah. That's well, scary. That and after I got stabbed, you know. But right. anyway. Hey, I wonder if someone like replaced her brain with a dog's brain. <laughs> <laughs> He's just following you around. <laughs> Sniffing oh, like my ass. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, all right. Moving on. Yes. We have a lot to get to. Of Ooh. course, old time of the week. Beer Babe. Dan has a movie review. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. It's been a minute. It has. Uh, bullpen Beer. We, this is our first bullpen beer in quite some time. Just in time for the baseball season, mm. by the way. <laughs> uh, lots of booze news. But first, we have a voicemail. Oh. From nice. Fontana Jim. Oh, shit. Hey, Unfiltered Gents. Steve, <laughs> Fontana Jim calling in. I'm wondering if any of you guys did the Bottle Logic Week of Logic this year, or if you managed to catch any of the days. Having just left there a wee bit ago, I will say it was a fucking line fest. There were lines everywhere. Lines to get in. Lines to get your shit. Ooh. Now, I understand it's a kind of a commitment to do seven days, but god damn it. <laughs> if there was an easier way to do this, I'd really rather do it. Because, um, you know, I'm kind of an adult. I've got responsibilities. <laughs> I have things to do on my day off. In quotes. <laughs> and uh, I had to go in there, bang out my seventh day, and then I had to get back to adulting <laughs> like the rest of responsible America. So I don't really know if I have a question, more of a statement, asking if you guys have done uh, Bottle Logic. And then, you know, if you have done some sort of line fest somewhere, what do you think is the handicap? What is the over-under on how long... You should wait in a line to get a beer. Ugh. Run that around the table. Hmm. See you guys later. Keep up the good work, guys. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Fontana. That guy Jim. brings thank the you. fucking energy, he dude. He does. I was guessing, falling asleep over here. He no. woke me up. Wow. Yeah. I'm guessing one of his responsibilities is not drinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll find out. Yeah. Uh, 805-538-BEER-2337 if you guys want to leave us a voicemail. Um, I have not done Bottle Logic's week of logic. It's basically like you go to Bottle Logic every day for a week. And I don't know what that really? is. Really? It's a brewery. It's down in Anaheim. Okay. Uh, it'd, be, okay. it'd be a little bit of an adventure for us to uh, get down there. Right. And it's the same week, though, right? Yeah, it's, it's, not... it's every day for a week. Seven, oh, wow. From what I understand. So um, everyone knows about it, so that's, that explains the lines. Yes. Oh, my exactly. God. One of those line fests. That's rough. But that it, that does raise a good question. Mm. What is the max amount of time you'd wait in a line that for, is a good question. for beer? I can tell you I've waited 15 minutes for Pliny the Younger. Okay. And I thought that was reasonable. Uh, anything above that, I don't, I don't think I'd wait. Um, at the 
Central Coast Craft Craft Beer Festival. The other weekend, I waited for Pliny the Elder. I was very surprised to see Russian River at a beer festival. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, we should do this. And my buddy that I was with had never had Pliny. Oh, well, there you like, go. Well, we need to get some Pliny in you. Um, I think we waited probably 10 to, f- I don't know, I've been drinking, 10 to 15 minutes for that one as well. I kind of feel like that's the max. I agree. Yeah. And, and, and it's only if it's like a special situation too. Like if I'm going to like, you know, it, it's it's there and it's available and it's just that day and it's right. until it runs out. Then I'll wait in line and, it, and it, anything longer than, if it's some in a situation like that, 15, I think maybe 20 mm-hmm. would be kind of cutting it. But, you know, but, you know, you got to get there before it runs out. And and right. I'm not talking about like, I'm going to drink that beer and I'm jumping back in another line for 15 minutes. Like, no, no, no I'm no, not no. going to do One that. And done. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, uh, the other thing is. Maybe like a beer festival, like you said, where it's just, you know, you're waiting for beer like five five minutes tops like, right? and something like that. So, yeah, n- not very long. Yeah. I don't have a lot of patience no, for that. No, me neither, especially when I'm sober. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. That's true. What say you? Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not, I am, am not a good line person. No. Mm. So I agree a one million percent with the Fontana gym there. Yeah. You should um, see me at Disneyland. Like, I'll just not ride the ride. <laughs> if I can see the the... The front of the line and it's moving. I will get in the line, mm-hmm. but if like it's wrapped around the corner or whatever, I'm like that. I, I just don't know of anything that's good enough to wait that long in a line. Yeah, yeah. Even beer. Oh, I can go to the store and buy it and go home and drink it. And Bang. Then, yeah, it is true. That's the answer. Yes. Uh, yeah. I don't. I just. I can't wait a long time. I know that uh, our friends Nick and Nicole from the Booze League talk about going to uh, the Firestone Invitational, Firestone Walker Invitational, which is every June. It's very hard to get tickets to, and it's a lot of really great breweries, and there's always like that one or two breweries that are there that everyone freaks out for, and there's like an hour-long line. Oh, fuck. And I've never been. I've never been able to get tickets, so I was talking about it with Nick, and he was saying like, I could wait in this one line for this really good beer, or I could go around and get pretty fucked up while you idiots wait in this hour-long yeah. line for yep. this yeah. really good yep. beer. That's right. It's like, it's not like the rest of beer around here is shit. Yeah. You guys are just waiting for this one like whale of a beer and I'm going to go keep drinking other beers. A whale of yeah. a beer. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm with you. Like maybe one person get in line while the rest like go get beer and like bring beer back to the person. Yeah, be a nice I person. I could see that. Yeah. But just stand there in line and not drinking for an hour nah, while you wait for one beer. Hell no. That's just that's just too much for me. I don't yeah. think I could do it. Mm-hmm. Especially that festival's up in Paso in the middle of summer. It's like 110 degrees and you're oh, just standing in one spot. No, that. Man, I'm not doing that. No, thanks. No, I need to get some cold beer in that's me. That's right. So, All right. Well, thanks, Montana Jim. Yeah, that was good. That was awesome. That yeah, was great. Great topic there. He's always bringing the goods. He yeah. does. Always man. with the energy, though. Right off the bat. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is him. He's yeah. got the energy, and he's always got the uh, the questions that make us think. That's yeah, right. Good questions, mm-hmm. man. Makes our head hurt. Uh, all right. Old timey word of the week. Kill priest. Kill priest. I was like, what? Wow. Apparently, it was code for port wine. Kill G- priest. Oh. Yes, he had a bottle of kill priest. Ah. Oh. I thought that was really fucking weird. It's pretty cody. That's yeah. Weird. I like the code for the booze. Like we had the one for gin a couple weeks, like lightning or something like that. Oh yeah. Which I kind of liked. So I was like, oh, I like the code word thing, but I don't understand kill priest. Kill priest for being port style wine. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. Especially such a specific style of wine that literally only comes from one part of the world. Right. I could see maybe wine is the blood of Christ. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so maybe that's where you get priest. There you okay. But I don't know about the kill part. Good I don't one. know how yeah. that's port. Yeah, that yeah, that's kind of where the uh, connection ends right there. Yeah. I was thinking it had maybe something to do with little boys. But oh, God. I, nope. I guess nope. Way off. <laughs> nope. <laughs> We're not going there. Nope. <laughs> we are not handling that. Uh, yeah. So anyways, uh, go ask for a, a, a glass of kill priest the next time you're out drinking <laughs> yeah. some wine. And then probably get, get smacked by somebody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do you say? Pour me some of that kill praise. <laughs> Sorry, sir. What did <laughs> What did you say? Oh, if I say it old timey, it makes it okay. Why don't you get your head out of your cooler and maybe you'll hear me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jim Ross. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> my cooler. <laughs> I'm telling you, Dan's gonna post it on Twitter. Oh, man. <laughs> oh dear. All right, let's uh, let's clean things up over here. No one could blame you for bed swerving. It's time for Beer Babe of the Week. It is, and her name is Tara. Tara, you can find Tara on the Instagrams at Tara T. Oh, shit. Yeah, Tara T-E-A, all in word. 
T A R A. She ain't drinking tea. No, <laughs> she is at Amplified Ale Works, which I think is down uh, in the San Diego region, mm. if I'm not mistaken. Mm. And she's got a pretty sweet Jurassic Park shirt on. And uh, <laughs> she's drinking the goods out in the sun as it's meant to be enjoyed. Gangster. Yes. So make sure you're following Tara at Tara T on the Instagrams. All right, we haven't heard this one in a while either. <laughs> it's been a minute. Have you seen the latest moving picture? Let's talk movies for guys. All right, so the movie I watched is uh, Death Wish. Yes. And this I'm not talking about that crappy Bruce Willis one that came out last year. This is the old Did school. Did you have a movie called Death Wish last year? It was a remake. Oh, what? Like a I reboot. Didn't know. <laughs> Dude, you that's all they do, either. man. That's that. all they do is a bunch of remakes and yeah. reboots. I was talking to somebody about this too, where if they do a remake or a reboot, like they had to just like not call it the fucking name, like call it something yeah. else. Then there's no preconceived notion. Exactly. About and then yeah. you walk in and you're watching, you're like, isn't this a little like Death Wish? But it's, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's not apparently. Yeah, it's similar. Yeah. So just buy the licensing, but call it something else just to fool us. Because right. I'm not going to watch it because it was already done the right way. Even if it's just slight, like, Death dreams, <laughs> you know. <laughs> death hope. Yeah, maybe. I don't yeah. know. At wishes that point, I'm death. like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah wishes. <laughs> I might put it together at that point. Like, oh, I walked into a crappy movie. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. That's true. But no, this is the old school. The the one that was done right, 1974. Oh yeah. Yeah, Charles Bronson. It's yeah. a movie. The man. I gotta say, yeah, it was just uh, I got into movies that I, I haven't watched yet, and I'm embarrassed to say I hadn't watched them. I said, you know what? I'm gonna start watching a couple of these. So. Yeah, this is uh, Death Wish. Here's the trailer. Enjoy a typical afternoon in New York City. Who is it? Percy's man. Thanks. What kind of grossy is she getting? <laughs> hey, mother. Tell you where the cucumber went. My name is Paul Kersey. How's my life? I'm sorry. She died a few minutes ago, Mr. Kersey. Any chance of catching these men? There's a chance, sure. Just a chance. I'd be less than honest if I gave you more hope, Mr. Kersey. This is Paul Kersey. This is the story of a man who decided to clean up the most violent town in the world. Good for him. Give me the money. He begins where all the super cops leave off. Bugging has gone down by how much, sir? 950 a week to 470 to be ported last week. You understand not so many people know that. And uh, you want to keep it that way, huh? Oh, no, we have to keep it that way, Inspector. This whole city would explode. And if this person is listening to my voice, I urge him in the name of law and order to desist from this one-man crusade and turn himself into the police. Get funky. I see the money. Oh, yeah. Call him a mad vigilante. Okay. Call him a hero. Yes. Either way, he's always on target. We want you to get out of New York permanently. Never make a death wish because a death wish always comes true. Boom. And you get to love it. (laughs) Oh, man. That is so 70s. Oh, it is, man. It's just a good trailer. It's one of those old school like trailers like with the guy that the voice, like you said before, the right. uh, oh, in a world, yeah, <laughs> yeah before that all came. What around. does Dan know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. The, this is a uh, we should do an old timey one. It's like, what does Dan know? <laughs> what does Dan know? <laughs> but yeah, this is a, a movie with uh, Charles Bronson. Obviously, this is kind of like his. Uh, I don't know if it necessarily fits his breakout movie, but it's definitely a movie that everyone kind of thinks of, like 
Arnold Schwarzenegger in the Terminator. Like Charles Bronson is Death Wish, basically. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And this movie is uh, you basically heard it in the trailer. And I gotta say, if you watch the trailer, it's pretty much the whole movie inside like <laughs> a minute. Save, save your two hours yeah, right there. There you go, man. I think I even show you what happens at the end. It's crazy. <laughs> anyway, I guess that was trailers back in the days. But uh, anyways, uh, like um, this movie is about yeah Charles Bronson. His uh, his wife gets brutally murdered and raped Uh oh yeah which is a really graphic scene for the time like i totally get why anyone would like not want me to watch that at that you know point in time sure i'm watching all these like slasher movies or whatever and my parents are like no you're not watching this shit (laughs) you're gonna be warped after the first couple minutes (laughs) why not mom yeah yeah they would just never explain it like oh you're just too young i'm like oh watch all these movies but yeah yeah that first scene is like really really graphic and kind of uh, alarming hmm. and it should be you know it should put you in that state like hey fuck these guys man and uh and they've that, got a death wish yeah <laughs> and, and that's what happens this guy he's just a normal guy you know at first you know law-abiding citizen and uh you know he just has enough you know the cops can't help him he's like you know what fuck this shit i'm gonna take you know matters into my own hands and by matters i mean my gun <laughs> and i'm gonna start shooting people <laughs> and uh it, it's 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 a it's a movie where it's like man i don't know like I, I also went in the beginning he goes like um shooting uh at a firing range with his buddy mm-hmm. who kind of reintroduces him back to guns i believe charles bronson was in the military or something like that so he's actually a really good shot okay yeah but he just kind of shows him hey you know it's this guy from texas uh, you of know of course yeah he's, and he ends up buying him a gun when he leaves off to new york city he sends him a gun in the mail and so this is the gun that he uses to you know get back at the criminals to clean up the streets yeah and i gotta say i don't know like i went uh shooting with uh my brother and some friends for a uh it was like a i guess a bachelor party of sorts uh-huh. for you know my brother you know he's gonna get you married strippers <laughs> oh god, oh, god. <laughs> yeah we we're taking a bite out of crime that day <laughs> no 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 yeah we went we went firing went to a firing range and uh Man, it was, I got to say, I had a lot more fun than I thought I was going to. I was like, dude, this is awesome. Like, I'd never fired a gun before. I got to say, though, um, the handguns were a little tricky and a little scary yeah. for me. Yeah, like, I was way more freaked out by a handgun than right. it was a rifle. I felt like at any point, if my hand slipped, it would yes. come right back at me and shoot someone else or whatever. It's too too dangerous to have something that small. Right, and you that know? easy to fire. Exactly. Where the rifle, like, you had to cock it. Exactly. Yeah. You have to point it at someone that's big and, you know, <laughs> yeah, long. Yeah, it's pretty lumbersome. Yeah. It, yeah, you're not going to actually shoot your foot with the rifle. Yeah, if you thing. have it pointed at somebody, it's with intent at that point. So, yeah, you know, I don't know, Dick Cheney. I don't know how you're shooting people <laughs> going exactly. hunting and a bunch of crap. <laughs> exactly. But uh, And I got to say... I, it, I was pretty damn good at that, man, at, at uh, shooting the oh. uh, clay pigeons. Oh, yeah? I was surprised. I was like, holy shit. Yeah. Like, you know, I was doing like the double pump on like um, nice. yeah, some of them that were flying. And I know this is a movie review turned into Dan's uh, right. <laughs> weekend at Dan's bachelor party or whatever. <laughs> Please don't come here angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, it, it was uh, it was really good. But like I said, it, had to, it, it, it was very interesting. Like uh, basically the clay pigeon would get away from me until like I imagined like it did something to me. <laughs> oh god yeah. i was like fuck that fucking pigeon yeah, man let's never piss him off yeah so you know all of a sudden like you know i i got more focus like i want to shoot this fucking pigeon yeah and i would like you know it would take two shots maybe but i would knock it out and people are like oh wow you're really good at this like for a first time i'm like yeah well fuck that pigeon right <laughs> killed my parents damn it like, you know what i mean like I am Batman. yeah so i don't know it's just uh and that's the way when you're watching death wish like it, it kind of gives you that feeling of like uh the vigilantism mm-hmm. you know what i mean seeing like something where you know it, where justice isn't enough sometimes you want to see people like you know you know they got locked up for life or something but you want to see someone just gun them down in broad daylight or yeah you know, a little taste of their own medicine <laughs> that's what you get yeah a fun fact about this shoot movie. them in the cooler <laughs> 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 a fun fact about this movie was they were actually considering starring uh dustin hoffman oh really yeah as the role kind for of death we- wouldn't that be weird captain hook yeah <laughs> oh shit tootsie right. yeah tootsie that's what i thought of i thought of tootsie i'm like i gotta make tootsie death wish and, and i guess like their logic was and i get i kind of get it was that 
they were going to say, well, he starts out normal. Like you're not supposed to suspect that he's going to go running around killing people, oh. and then he gets pushed too far. And I can kind of see that where it was with Dustin Hoffman. Maybe in I, Kramer versus Kramer, I guess. Yeah. You, you know, I could see him kind of like degenerating to that point, being pushed too far. You right. know what I mean? Where they said with Charles Bronson, the guy kind of felt like, well, I knew he was going to start blowing people away. I mean, look at him. He's look Charles Bronson. Guy. But I got to be honest, like I, I thought about it afterwards. I was having a, a talk with, I think, my parents about it, you know, because I just brought up the movie. And, you know, that's what I do when I see my parents bring up movies. Sure. And um, I think my mom had made the point that she said, well, in pretty plainly that she didn't think that Dustin Hoffman would do something like that. And I was thinking, well, it's a movie, but at the same time I was thinking, well, it's true. Like if my neighbor looked like Charles Bronson and then some gangbangers or whatever killed his wife, you know, it's going to happen. Yeah. Well, you know, I wouldn't guess it. I'm like, that's my neighbor. I feel bad for him. Poor guy or whatever. And then thugs start dropping in the streets. I'm like, dang, what's going on? And then at the end of the movie, or you know, when, you know, the guy, spoiler alert, (laughs) get shot right you know i would have thought oh shit that was my neighbor but it's like <laughs> if he looks like charles bronson i totally see it like okay i get it right. like he it takes a guy with some balls to want to you know do something like that you know so i totally get it you know and hey this is a movie you're drinking along with sounds like you're it. enjoying all the you know blasts of all these thugs and everything and classic bronson classic bronson movie so yeah totally thoroughly dug it nice great well, story buddy yeah I'll give your parents my best <laughs> Will do. Yeah. <laughs> Love them. <laughs> oh, dear. Would never hurt them. <laughs> okay. Oh, geez. All right. Let's, uh, everybody need some beer in their cups over there? I'm, I'm empty. All right. Yeah. Cool. Let's make it a very important call then. He calls to the bullpen for beer. It's been a while, but I guess we got to get back to actually reviewing different styles of beer on this show. Uh, we spent a lot of time drinking some hazies. So now for our bullpen beer, Taxman Brewing's 401 Cake. Ooh. 8%, 26 IBUs, 3.96 on Beer Advocate, and a 3.84 on Untapped. From the brewery, Taxman Brewing, they say, Invest wisely in 401 Cake, our <laughs> German chocolate cake-inspired brown ale featuring rich and sweet cocoa nibs, toasted coconut, and Madagascar vanilla beans. Showcasing complex roasted and caramel malt notes. Max out your contribution limit on this smoothly decadent dessert ale. It is tax season after all. Oh, so, yeah. So contribute to I your know, 401 man. cakes. Did you guys get your taxes done already? <laughs> I did. I actually did mine in February. I was on is it. Is that right? Yeah. Look at you, man. I was all over it. Yeah, I got mine go. done. Good for you. Is everybody... Uh, <laughs> are, I haven't. Are your coolers okay? <laughs> well, well, yeah. At this point, yeah, I have. Yeah, totally done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you got a couple more days. That's true. But so. no, they did mine a week ago. Right. Sure you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was kind of funny because me and the wife both thought we were going to like have to pay this year. Mm-hmm. And so we went to the tax guy and he goes... After he did everything and he says, well, I got good news. And we, and they, we both are looking at him and he starts laughing. He goes... You should see the way both of you are looking at me right now. <laughs> he goes, no, you're getting money back. We're like, are you sure? <laughs> you should rerun that. And he he did. We made oh. him. We made him. Hey, do it again. Yeah. Is but, that yeah. right? Yeah. Hey, there you go. So that's that dollar news. is going to help. It's better than knowing. Hey. hey. That's true. Yes. Yeah. Hey. hey. I hate owning the government. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. So 401k. Let's talk about this beer. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> 401 cake. Uh, this is definitely a lot of chocolate. I get that. It's interesting. They they It's a Belgian style uh chocolate which gives it a different mm-hmm. little uh like after t- you just get a, a smidge of that belgiany aftertaste to it i think mm-hmm. uh i don't know that i get toasted coconut out of this thing do you guys get any coconut i mean now that you Slightly. said it yeah yeah, yeah yeah i get a little bit i, I think maybe uh, yeah after you suggested it right and, yeah i also get a little bit of booze which could also be the vanilla because they kind of have some oh, yeah. similar warmth yeah you're but, getting uh, some booze yeah what do you guys think do we like this one or i like it yeah me too the lady friend was not a fan why oh, yeah. she's usually adverse to anything that has to do with belgian anything uh, oh yeah so i would she say she she just didn't she like belgian it. yeah <laughs> she's racist <laughs> I've heard a popular uh, description that it smells like, or it smells, it tastes like feet. Oh, Saison's definitely. Oh, okay. And Belgians can. Yeah, yeah they, Belgians, they have similar, yeah, a little bit. Similar yeast strains. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, she just, she doesn't like anything banana. And like most Belgian yeah. beers have that banana and yeah. clove, you know, okay. like a half or whatever. True. Got you on that one. Yep. I don't get that in this. No. But, I mean, uh, there's a 
touch of it. Yeah, just but, kinda a little bit on the aftertaste. Just yeah. a, a smidge of that Belgian-iness. Yeah, it gets hidden with a lot of those other flavors, though. Yeah, but I could definitely invest in some 401 cake. <laughs> I'm, I'm good on that. Hell yeah. Let's all get a piece of that cake. <laughs> let's do it. Uh, all right, let's move on to a little bit of news. Extra, extra, drink all about it. It's time for booze news. A company called Cask and Kettle announces the launch of a ready-to-brew hot cocktail. It's like the Keurig for cocktails. Really? Yeah, you put in these pods and you get uh, boozy beverages out oh, of it. Oh, I don't wow. know if I trust that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're starting with Irish coffee, which makes sense. Okay. Spiked dry cider, uh, a hot a hot blonde, which I don't, as far as a drink is concerned, don't know what that is, and uh, a Mexican coffee. So the coffee drinks I totally get. Right. Mexican coffee, that Irish makes coffee. Sense, sounds for good. sure. I love me an Irish coffee. That is so, so good. But, a hot uh, blonde? I don't know what that is in drink form. Sounds like it's warm. I, I mean, it's coming out of this thing, which right. makes hot drink, so I, mm. I guess so. But uh, Somebody told me about this drink one time. It's called a red-headed slut. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, that sounds dirty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is nothing but sugar. Oh, yeah, yeah. It is. Have you had one? No, I never had it. I had one, I, I think, on my 21st birthday, and mm. uh, it tastes um, super sugary. Oh, okay. It was some chick that ordered it. Yeah, it sounds about right. It's one <laughs> of the things that was, I was handed. Um, what else? <laughs> Fastest growing breweries in America, according to the Brewers Association. I won't go through all 50, but uh, top 10 I thought we'd cover. Periodic Brewing in Leadville, Colorado. Borderlands Brewing in Tucson, Arizona. Bond Place Brewing in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, which you're going to wonder why I remember this, but I think that's where RVD's from. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> you're welcome, wrestling fans. <laughs> RVD? Yeah. Is he from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania? Um. No. Oh, maybe Kellogg. Uh, is Kel- he? Oh, all right. Well, I don't know. We can handle that. The whole whatever. fucking show. I'm, I'm <laughs> whole fucking sure show. I'm wrong yeah. Yeah. Mr. Monday Night. That's right. Uh, where were... Oh, I, s- huh? I just related him to cereal. I thought... Be- um, maybe I'm thinking of another wrestler. But anyway. <laughs> I don't know. We're not talking about wrestling, so... New Glory Craft Brewery out of Sacramento. Shattered Oak Brewing out of Oregon City, Oregon. Lone Pine Brewing out of Portland, Maine. The Dream Chasers Brewery out of Waxhaw, North Carolina. Waxhaw. Waxhaw. Oak Road Brewery out of Summersville, South Carolina. Finn's Big Oyster Brewery out of Red Hoboth Beach, Delaware. Rehoboth? I don't know. Rehoboth? And number one, hmm? Lake Time Brewery out of Clear Lake, Indiana. Wow. Yeah, I haven't heard of any of these. No, I haven't. <laughs> no, nobody has really. It's, <laughs> okay. it's well, they're growing. Yes, they are. Yeah, so look out for them. They are absolutely they're growing. They're on the come up. Yeah. Creeping on a come up. <laughs> Bone thugs. Oh, I was thinking of uh, Macklemore. Was that the Some, name? Somebody looking for a come up. Really? This is fucking awesome. Yeah. In that thrift shop song. Oh, he ripped off Bone Thugs, man. I'm sure he did. That was their album. Oh, uh, it was their gangster album with Eazy E on there. Was it? Yeah. How funny. And then after that, they did, you know, Crossroads and all that, like, softer stuff or whatever. Oh, but, yeah. You know, because Eazy died. They got all depressed. Right. Of course. <laughs> As one would. All off on a tangent <laughs> over here. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else? Oh, Allagash Brewing founder Rob Todd. That's a, first of all, come on, parents. Rob Todd. <laughs> You didn't say that out loud before you <laughs> named him? <laughs> no kidding. Yeah, you didn't even hear it the first time you said it. <laughs> Neither did sound us off some people before we... Uh, yeah. Nope. They didn't, the wanna, papers. <laughs> didn't want to do that, apparently. <laughs> what the fuck? Allagash Brewing founder Rob Todd <laughs> uh, selected as a finalist to receive the James Beard Foundation's 2019 Outstanding <laughs> Wine, Spirits, or Beer Producer Award. Take that. Yeah. He's the only one uh, from the beer category on there, so good job for you there. Hey, right, now, right up there with Jim Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Todd and Jim Bob. Rob Todd. <laughs> That's my favorite tag team. Roll Tide. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Russian Rivers Pliny the Younger. Generated over four million dollars in economic impact for Sonoma County. Ooh. So just in people coming up there yeah. and staying and, and eating and all that stuff to get their hands on Pliny the Younger. No other beer, but Pliny the Younger. Wow. Generated an estimated four million dollars. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Wow. Right out of debt. <laughs> Rebuilding from the ashes. That's right. 
Uh, a survey online says that shopping while drunk is worth billions to oh, the yeah. U.S. economy. I believe that. Are you part of that problem? <laughs> uh, no, but I, I just could imagine. Yeah. Apparently, uh, 79% of U.S. alcohol consumers have made at least one drunk purchase, while the average <laughs> annual spend per drunk shopper is $444. It's true. Yeah. Uh, the, this is according to Forbes. The estimate is that drunk shopping is now worth Forty-five billion dollars a year oh, to man. just the U.S. economy alone, dude. Mm-hmm. I remember I went to Vegas one time with my buddy, and uh, we got trashed. Well, it's Vegas, yeah, yeah. But we were at uh, where the fuck were we? It's like MGM buffet or something like that, and mm-hmm. like we're just having like it was mimosas, but it was sure. bottomless, and oh, we yeah. were just getting like as soon as I drank one, that person was just on top of it, like. Because we, we that's got the it. way to do it. Yeah, we got the buffet for free, so I gave her a tip, oh, ten dollar yeah. tip, and said, "Hey, just fill it up." And Keep she was flowing. there. Yeah, as yeah. soon as I was done, boom, hit me up. And as soon as I was done, boom. So we got fucked up, and uh, I we ended up, you know, back at you know back at the place, you know, and we met up with his friends and everything. I knocked out on their couch, of course, because that's what I do when I'm drunk. Sure. Mm. Yeah, and then uh, I woke up, and he was like, "You all ready to go out?" And I'm like, "Yep, let's go." <laughs> and he goes, um. He goes, uh, well, I'm glad I got that shirt. Are you going to wear yours? I'm like, what are you talking about? Oh, no. He's like, yeah, you bought a shirt. <laughs> we went to Ross because I needed a sweater, and you got a shirt. I go, I did? <laughs> He's like, yeah. And I checked to make sure I had my wallet and everything, right. and like nothing fell out. I'm like, oh, I still got everything. Yeah, and there in a bag was a shirt. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's a nice shirt. I like yeah. it. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to wear it. I still have that shirt. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't like some shitty Hawaiian no, shirt. I got or Drunk Daniel's got great taste, man. <laughs> that's good. He's a, he's a fancy fellow. If anybody needs to go shopping, just hit up Drunk Dan. That's right. Yeah, he's, he'll hook you up. <laughs> good Lord. Uh, more than 50% of American employees get wasted on business trips. I know I have. Oh, oh. You got to. Yeah. It's on their it's on their oh, dime. Yeah, definitely. It's on their bill. Yeah. yeah. You guys ever go on business trips? Mm. Your, your current employers? It's been a minute. No. Mm-hmm. I'd like to go back because, man, they just, they, they put us in a hotel with bottomless, like, uh, was, yeah, yeah, it was like beer in the fucking, you know, in the in the lobby. That's, we're just getting trashed. That is, that is scary for them. It's like, there, it was like a test. And you like, failed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I showed up. There was some people that were like, hey, where the fuck is Willie or whatever? It's like, oh, dude, he's not. He was drinking in the lobby. Oh, God. And he's still sleeping, I think. I was like, dude, man, go check on him. Jeez. It's like, yo, I was sick. Yeah, right. Yeah, you were. Yeah. You drank too. <laughs> uh, more than a half of, Ameri- of American employees travel for work at least once a year, amounting to about 462 million domestic business trips alone in 2017. And when they're out of the office, they let loose in a big way. Of the 1,000 employees uh, who were surveyed, more than 50% admitted to getting drunk outside of work hours on business trips, while 28% said they didn't even wait until after hours to get intoxicated. <laughs> hey, my kind of people. Yeah. And it's not just drinking. Almost, 20th, almost 23% of employees said they smoked marijuana, Whoa. while about <laughs> 1 in 10 said they dabbled in harder, illicit substances. Fuck. Uh-oh. Like, okay. Another 20% admitted to using some of their time away visiting a strip club or oh, meeting boy. up with someone from a dating app or website. Hey, now. Nice. Yeah. That's uh, it's good times on the company. Yeah, I was going to say, hello, Whole Foods on my lunch, I guess. I <laughs> right. Get a couple beers there. Yeah. I don't know about smoking weed, man. I would be like non-operational. That's the thing. I, I, I'm never one of those people that could wake and bake. Fuck no. No. I just. No. You want to see Greg not get any work done? That's right. Here we go. <laughs> Can't even text my job to let them know. <laughs> you know, I'd be like, hi, this is Danny. Like, oh, man, you sound so stoned. You got to change that. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> this is Daniel. Yeah, I'm contacting my employer. <laughs> you should have Fontana Jim call for you. <laughs> there you, you go. You should call in. Yeah. Hey, Dan's work. Yeah. <laughs> Dan's not going to make it in. Dan's He's waiting sick. in line for marijuana. Yeah. <laughs> How long are you going to wait in line? <laughs> That'd be so good. We need him to, to call in for us. That's right. <laughs> oh, yeah. God. They'd listen to him. Yeah. He commands. <laughs> he does. He does. Commands attention. Uh, run out of time, but I do want to end it on this story. A drunk man was impaled by stick after jumping off overpass. Oh. Ouch. It gets worse. Oh, no. A drunken man was impaled by a stick in his buttocks Ew. after police say he jumped off an overpass on Sunday. 
gets even worse because charges are pending Uh-oh. against Trevin Sanders, 21, for two counts of bail jumping. And he also, <laughs> ironically jumping. And he also has an outstanding city of La Crosse municipal warrant, according to the police report. Police said dispatch received a report about 3.21 p.m. that a man jumped off the bridge on the north side of the over of the overhead and was bleeding from his butt after landing oh on a God. stick. Oh, my God. You can't make this out. <laughs> an ambulance took Sanders to a medical center. Sanders' girlfriend said Sanders drank half a liter of vodka, and according to police, his That'll preliminary bu- <laughs> blood alcohol content was 0.162%. Oh, Did they get that from the blood coming out of his ass? Uh, it would have been an easy sample. Yeah, yeah. There was right, lots was of it. And so he went to the medical center, and they said, where's the wound? He's like, it's in my ass. <laughs> in my cooler. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, JR. <laughs> JR. The big man is back. <laughs> 350 pounds here. We're going to need to pose it. People are like, what the fuck are they talking about? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, everybody out there, please don't get stabbed in the cooler. No, that that's, is that's not the way to go. In the cooler. In yeah, the cooler. Especially not in the cooler. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that's it for us. We went a little over, but I think everyone <laughs> needed to hear the cooler story. For sure. That is for certain. Uh, thanks all for listening. Find us at theunfilteredgentleman.com. Also find us this weekend at Frillings Fest at Ennegrin in Moore Park, California. We're on the social medias at The Unfiltered Gentleman, except for Twitter at Unfiltered Gents. Fuck you, Twitter. <laughs> you can leave us a voicemail, 805-538-BEER. It's 2337. And I think that is everything. So hope everyone out there is staying hydrated. And on that note, good night, everybody. Good night.